But then you get in the Word of God and it says something totally different. So you know it's not, it wasn't God, it was just their will being done over the will of God. Hallelujah. So he says, walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. You walk worthy of the vocation. Praise God that you were, oh, oh hallelujah, that you were called to do something. Praise God. Now, Brother Larry was talking about this earlier in the song He says, come out from among them. And be separate, saith the Lord. And touch, and touch not the unclean. And I will receive you. And will be a father unto you. You shall be my sons and my daughters, saith the Lord God Almighty. The vocation, one of the, we've been called, we've been called to be his sons and his daughters. Yes. So you walk worthy of that vocation. Walk worthy of being a son or a daughter of God. Hallelujah. He says, walk worthy with all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Yes. The thing is, <coughs> with the natural man, you can't endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit. The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. They're foolishness to him. Neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned or spiritually seen. Hallelujah. So endeavor, endeavoring, to, or endeavoring means to work very hard at it. To keep the unity of the Spirit. And you're not going to do it in the flesh. It's going to be, and praise God, it's, oh, hallelujah, it's a unity between you and God. Because God's a spirit. And you can have this unity with him. When you ask Jesus into your heart, the two become one. Your spirit and the spirit of Jesus come together like a marriage. And the two become one. There's a unity of the spirit that we can have with God. Like I said before, that he will walk in us. He will talk in us. He'll be our God and we'll be his people. He says we have to endeavor to keep it. Because so many things are out in the world. And even Jesus says in the world you're going to have tribulation. If Jesus says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Get used to it. <coughs> but be of good cheer. He goes on and says, I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. So the tribulation comes, big deal. Jesus has already beaten it. Hallelujah. He goes on he says, There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Now I, I was looking at this and I says, Wow, this is the God with whom I have to deal with. That he is all in all. There's none greater than him. Peter writing to Timothy, uh, Paul writing to Timothy, I should say. Paul writing to Timothy says that God is the only wise God. And we just said that he will dwell in us. God of power. God of might. God of love. Hallelujah. One God and the Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Praise God. Law comes by Moses. Grace and truth come by Jesus Christ. 
And we've been studying this back and forth, the difference between law and grace. And then how law came first, grace came afterwards. Law set the stage for Jesus to come. But once, at, once Jesus has come, you don't need the law. The law is your schoolmaster to bring, bring you to Jesus. Once you have Jesus, you don't need the law as a schoolmaster. You have something, something, someone else to teach you. It's called the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he's, when, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things, or fulfill all things. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. These are all gifts from God. Oh, I don't like those gifts. They're going to tell me what I have to do. And I want to do whatever I want to do. But they're given for a reason. In verse 12 he says, They're given for the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Saints need to be perfected. Amen. We're perfect inside because we have Jesus within us. But this outward man, see, we have to we have to stop yielding our members as instruments of unrighteousness and start yielding them as members of instruments of righteousness. Yes. We are servants of God. We got have to start acting like servants of God. Right? And this is the work of the ministry. This is the work. Of this is what apostles and prophets and pastors and evangelists and teachers do. They give you the word. Tell you what you have to do. Not so they can put you under their thumb, but that you can grow, that you can prosper, that you can have freedom, that you can have liberty in Him. Yes. Hallelujah. So that you can receive the blessings of God. Hallelujah. For the edifying of the body of Christ. The body needs to be built up. Hallelujah. He goes on, he says, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the, of the stature of the fullness of Christ. See, God wants us, our Father wants us to be like Jesus. He says we are to be partakers of his divine nature. That we are, that we're to be like Jesus. Even Jesus said, tells us, he says, be perfect as my Father which is in heaven is perfect. Okay? So, praise God. So here he's saying, he's saying that as we, uh, he says, we come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Another place in Scripture he says that we should know even as we are known. The word don't know more than we know right now. We're supposed to know ourselves as God knows us. We're to measure ourselves with Jesus. I mean, a man comes along and he gives you all these standards and they'll put their rules up on the board, on a board or a blackboard or, or wherever, or on a wall or something, and say, this is what you have to do. In fact, in fact, I, I, was, I, I just visited my son out in Seattle, and he told me about the, uh, the church that he was going to. And it says his pastor got kicked out of this church because he would not sign a document saying these 16 beliefs you have to hold as truth. Not that, you, not that the truths were wrong. But how, could, how dare they force a man to, to sign this? Mercy. That's not, that's not the love of God. That's man's organization. 
I said, well, Tim, I says, I praise God he has some backbone. But man comes along and tries to put rules and regulations to you. <coughs> God says, he'll write his laws on your heart. And he'll put them in your mind. That's who you're accountable. You're not accountable to me. You're not accountable to anybody in this place. Yeah. All you're accountable is God and what God has laid upon your heart. Amen. Oh, Amen. Now, I like to say, don't anyone tell me that God hasn't put anything in your heart. Right. Because the Word of God says He has. That's right. True. Amen. And I was like, you know, people come to me with all, all kinds of stuff and says, well, what about this? And, and, and right away I know they're trying to, God is laying something upon their heart. And they're trying to get, up, get out of it. <laughs> They're trying to escape from it. They don't want to do this. True. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. We measure ourselves against Jesus. Are we being pleasing? Are we being pleasing, being pleasing to God? If you are pleasing to God, then the scripture says it's a very small thing to be judged of man or of you. Praise God. Hallelujah. God will deal with you. Mm -hmm. Thank Hallelujah. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pray as God. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. What God has said unto you, as we just going over this, that God will speak in you. What God has said to you, what God has said in you, you hang on to it. Don't listen to what man says. Don't listen to what, what, what the wind of doctrine, that every wind of doctrine that comes along. Because as you go along, and, and boy, it, you know, one minute you're over here, and the next minute you're over here, and you're getting swayed back and forth by every wind of doctrine. The scripture says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. I mean, stay with the Word of God. What God has revealed to you, you stick with it. Hallelujah. Because man, man and, all, and, and the enemy is going to come along, and he's going to try to deceive you. But when you stand fast on what God has said, when you stand fast on, on, on the Word of God, and you know the truth, and along comes some wind of doctrine that doesn't line up, you say, no way, I can't accept that. Don't even talk to me. If you want to talk to me, let's get on our Bibles and see what that says. Hallelujah. Praise God. Goes on. But speaking the truth, and Jesus is the truth, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. For whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working of the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Don't walk like they walk. Their idea of their idea is self-promotion. To promote themselves. To lift up themselves. The Word of God tells us that we are to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And let Him exalt you in due time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. 
vanity of mind that doesn't look any further than than a mirror. See how wonderful I am. Their understanding has been darkened. Hallelujah. Can we just read? Open our eyes that we can see. Yes. Our eyes can be open to the truth. The truth in the Word of God. And the truth of the Word of God is that Jesus is Lord. The truth of the Word of God is that Jesus had a Father. It's God Almighty. And that the truth of the Word of God is that Jesus submitted himself to the will of the Father. And the truth of the Word of God is that everyone that does the same thing and submits themselves to Jesus, confessing Him as their Lord, will be saved. They will be exalted. Those who do not will not be saved. Hallelujah. Who being past feeling have given themselves under over themselves over unto lasciviousness to work on uncleanness with greediness. You have people that have no feeling for other people. No compassion left. It's all vanity of mind. Give me, give me, give me. Let my needs be met. Let my wants be taken care of. Let me be pampered. It becomes selfish. But you have not so learned Christ, have you? Amen. Hallelujah. That's what it says. But you have not so learned Christ. The anointing is Christ. Christ is the anointing. He's the anointed one. Hallelujah. <coughs> the anointing will move upon the people because of love. The scripture says faith works by love. Not love of self. It's when you humble yourself and put others before yourself. This is when the anointing comes upon you. And it's not what you're doing for someone else. It's what Jesus and what God is doing. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If so be that ye have been heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off, concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. See, the old man cannot put on Christ. The natural man cannot put on Christ. It's the old man that, that stinks. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King.